I'm keen to put these in place to see if they fit. Well, that's the splashback fitted. Well, it's time to fit this breakfast bar slash shelf. The shelf needs to be fitted, which will support the bottom of the splashback. Well, I've had another win picking up these splashback pieces for where the oven will sit and they look good. Obviously, I need to do a dry fit to see whether the templates and the pieces match up. I'm keen to put these in place to see if they fit and getting it fitted permanently should not take long at all. These, as I've mentioned before, are just going to be screwed in place. I may put just one or two daubs of Fix 15 and that purely just to stop any vibration, especially when the engine's running. So the next step is to put them in, mistress, and see if they fit. Well, that's the splashback fitted. That pretty much went in. The two sides were spot on. The back did require a little bit of trimming on that forehead edge, but minor. But otherwise, the effort into the templates, taking it down to the stainless steel guys, has definitely made it easy for those guys to make it up for me, so that that is a minimal install job. So the last thing to do which is pretty damn exciting, I must say, is to mark the position for where the gimbal brackets will need to be bolted through these bulkheads to support the oven.
Well, now that the coating process is done for these panels, it's time to get them inside of Mistress. Well, it's time to fit this breakfast bar slash shelf. But before I do that, I need to complete this little vent here. What I've got is a little plastic vent that's got a stainless steel mesh on the inside to stop any insects or whatever going down into the vent and then eventually potentially making its way to the water. So that's important. So what I'm going to do, this is a plastic of sorts and it's a nice firm fit to go over the top of that 12 mil stainless steel pipe. So what I'll do is heat this up with the heat gun and hopefully just be able to slide that down over the top with a little bit of lubrication, which should be enough to hold that in place. And once the shelf is in place, it won't be able to come up and work its way loose anyway because it'll hit the bottom of this. So I'll fit that first and then I just need to sand to roughen up the paint surface here on both the bulkhead and on the underside here on the epoxy of this shelf. Mix up some epoxy glue, smear a liberal coat on the top and the edge, put this in place. I won't put any screws through the top because obviously that'll ruin that lovely rosewood, but I will put a couple through the back here. They'll be covered later with the trim to hold that in place. And then once that epoxy goes off, that won't be going anywhere. So after marking the splashbacks with the positions of the brackets for the oven, I've removed those, taken them below and just drilled those holes out. They needed to be removed anyhow because the shelf needs to be fitted, which will support the bottom of the splashback. Whilst that splashback was in position, I marked exactly where the shelf supports need to go. So that's what I'll do now. 
Here's the different parts, three shelf supports, and the shelf here as well. I made those up in conjunction with the dividers for cabin three and a couple of other bits. So they're all made up and ready to go in now. Pre-drill the shelf supports and then they can go in place and the shelf on top. And there we have it folks, a great cooking splashback and one very strong gimbal bracket fitted. The breakfast bar shelf in place and in the next episode there is a lot of panel installation going on. Join me then. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe if you haven't, click the bell so you get the notifications, check out my website, and as I always say, leave a comment, because I like reading what you have to say. Mm -hmm.